Welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. Thank you for joining me. So yeah, um, an interesting weekend. I think the biggest thing we can take out of it is just how well matched the Southern versus Northern Hemisphere teams going into this weekend. I think it was just a bunch of really tight and intense games. So let's get into it. Obviously, England New Zealand game. What a game by England! I really think if you consider the question marks everybody's been posing over the last uh, year to Eddie Jones. It's a ball, different game, different team the last two games. I mean, even the South Africa game, they really were able to stut, uh, stifle South Africa, be able not, not allowing them to play their game. And then the exact same thing to England, to New Zealand, which I was quite shocked by. It was one of the first time I've ever seen New Zealand really have a hard time bringing their own game plan into it. They were kicking off them. I mean, they even resorted to a drop goal. That's the first bo- drop goal in Bowden Barrett's professional career. So, I mean, England really, really, I think, stunned. Um, the whole world rugby community, community, and in my opinion, that was their game. Uh, that they, in my opinion, they won it. Uh, it's an it's an unlucky one, and it's a tight call that that tried disallowed try at the end there. So unfair, but I think they can only take positives from that. That is a loss, but it still it means so much more for England going into the World Cup. John Mitchell, I think, has made a huge impact in combining with Eddie Mitchell. It, what am I saying, Eddie Jones? Uh, they really have got a team there that I that is going to be a formidable force next year. So congratulations to them. I think they are continuing. They're going to really just grow from that. And I mean, if you have combined the team that had nearly broke the the all time record in uh, wins with the team that's playing now, it's just going to get better. And I think there's a lot of players who still even didn't play in this game that can showcase. I think Owen Farrell had a better game. Um, every overall, the English team just really performed well. So I think. There's just good things to take from that. I think probably their biggest thing that helped them get there is their ability to push over the rucks. They really uh, cleared their own rucks, so some good ball stealing, but really slowing down the game, not in the sense of uh, bad, in a bad way, but really well done in the way that they were slowing down the game. One of the biggest things that is, a f- in my opinion, a funny, um, like, round the world, come back to bite you situation is the rule change that was made early this year in World Rugby following Italy, the Italy win over England when it comes to the ruck. And I think if you look at that, that is actually what a situation. There were no English players bound, and yet they could still, um, yet it was still considered an advantage line, which is incorrect following the new rules. So that is where I think it's a little unfair to them, but at the same time, that is exactly a strategy that hurt them and now it's come to bite them again even though they changed the rules to try and fix it it's still bit them so i think they have to look at that have to look at handling that situation but in my opinion england was in the right there and new zealand were lucky which often new zealand is so well done to england new zealand played a stunning game let's face it you're you the even what my one of my favorite sayings from uh coach previously was it, it doesn't matter a, a sign of a great team is to win even when you're playing badly so well done to new zealand also but I think all that it means is just mouth-watering for the World Cup. Next to the Australia-Wales game, I think both sides had a hard time really putting anything into that game. It was a hard-fought battle, a little bit untidy, but in the end, Wales pulled it through. Both teams can take away that they're really hard-growing. I think Australia started at least improving their finishing game, their ability to finish up, and Wales, I think, had a much more disciplined game, so well done to both sides. I think that it was a good game, but probably not the best of the weekend. I'd say the England-New Zealand game was the best of the weekend. So moving on to Scotland, I think, what a game for them. Really, really good. Um, Ireland, I think, in my opinion, Ireland need to question themselves. Argentina are way lower ranked than them if you consider world rankings. And Argentina put a massive performance in, really showcased why they are why they are considered one of the new world forces. And if they continue to grow like that, I think there's a lot of hope. I think the biggest thing for them now is discipline in, in the last 20 minutes. Once they get those points out, they're going to be a force to reckon with considering how they perform in the rugby championship and against Ireland this weekend. So let's move on to the South Africa-France game. So... So that with France, it wasn't a great game. I'm not gonna, as a Bok fan, it was painful, it was a late game, but, and I think the, the temperature and the con- lateness of the game actually affected the players' performance because both seeds were, seed teams were a little lackluster. France came out the gate very strong, 
really powerful performance. And I am proud to see South Africa really being able to show their ability, their last 20 growth that they've been developing over the, over the year. You can really see that we are focusing a lot more in the second half than we used to. So that is some good development. I think there are good things to take from it. Dwayne Vermeulen had a good game. We had, we, uh, and I think there was a couple other players who really did at least showcase their, their stalwart and their ability to, under pressure, handle it. Alton Yankees, good game. So yeah, but my, what, one of the things that is the saddest of the game is I feel everybody obviously, we uh, even my previous video, I uh, said Fuff needs to come back to bring some creativity into the team. And I think he actually had a hard time doing that. He didn't show the lackluster, the, the, uh, the, it was very lackluster, very similar to Ivan van Sal's game the previous week, not being able to get the backline really into the game. And it's so hard to then judge the backline because of that. I think uh, Dianti was again on fire. He really pushed. And of course, he also really pushed really good moments. But unfortunately, especially that try from uh, pushing through um, from the from the kickoff, well done. But I think overall, it's hard to gauge. They didn't really get a lot of front foot ball. I think it's partly. I think the forwards pack isn't gelling yet. But but what is good is let me focus more on the second half. So Peter Steff moving to flank again changed the game and really helped a lot. Peter Steff needs to stay there. I think this is now the final answer to it. Rossi uh, has tested it now. Starting him in lock, moving to flank, and he really performed better in the flank position. He is a bot flank now and needs to stay that way. Talking about that, Warren Whitelander won't be able to play in the next game, most likely. Uh, so I think that'll be good for Dwayne to move to eighth man and then Peter Steff to uh, slot in there. Yevon is uh, at back at training, so it should be good. I think there's a lot of uh, potential in this forward pack, but they're not. I'm not seeing it yet. Kitsov had a mediocre game. I don't think he was so good over the ball that he normally is, but the scrums were strong and he was average ball carrier throughout the game. But yeah, I think the, the probably the credit most goes to Bongi and, Bongi and Alten Yankees. They really came in Alten Yankees, put a lot more flair into the back line and I, that is part, partially how you got a question now. Is it Ivan or Fuff, that's the problem. Or is Pollard not giving them the ability to play that? I don't know where it is. Pollard had a solid game, but he never really changed the game. Whereas I feel uh, Alton Yankees, have partly his own skill. I do think that the South Africa's conditioning helped a lot there as over France, but that was probably where the game changed. Alton Yankees really had a lot more tactical things and he had a lot of great movements. And then obviously Cheston Colby really starting to showcase why he should be on the team. I, unfortunately, it sucks to be him because there's a lot of great players vying for the positions he's in, but really stunning game again. That try, disallowed try, really good. And I actually want to also question that. There's another try that I feel should have been, um, I'm not saying obviously he didn't ground it, I get that, but the fact of the matter is, if you tackle a player high to save a try, it's a penalty try. So that one, luckily South Africa, this 50-50 flipped our way in the end because we got the Bongi and Rama try. Great try in my opinion, good forward pack try. Good old South African try once things go around. So I think at least the team bound together and didn't lose hope, especially after a call like that, and that's good to see. So I think the major things that we can take from this, this game really is that it's all about the last 20. It's all about making sure that the team stays together, that you stick to your gun, stick to your strategy, and you'll overpower the other team. So well done. Again, even when you play badly, you still win a game is the motto of this weekend for me. And that's where I think at least South Africa and New Zealand show that they still they do have a lot of firepower going into the World Cup, and that's going to be exciting to see. Overall, I think the mo the real overshadowing thing from this weekend for me is every game between Northern and Southern Hemisphere teams, besides maybe the Fiji-Scotland game, but I feel it's a little unfair on Fiji, so I'm not going to bring that in there. Every other game was exceptionally tight. While hard fought, both teams really pushing it out, and that's great to see because it's growing both world sides, and it's just going to make the World Cup more and more mouth-watering. You really saw how the Northern Hemisphere teams have, have, have the ability to really slow down the Southern Hemisphere fast-paced, super rugby style of play, as most of the teams are bringing into their national teams, whereas the Northern Hemisphere teams have a much more a brute force approach, and they really do have... Um, they like to almost overpower the team, whereas the Southern Hemisphere teams like to run past them. And I have to admit, the Southern Hemisphere teams couldn't handle the, the strength of the Northern Hemisphere teams in a large respect. So I think it's lucky this week that the Southern Hemisphere teams took the majority of games. Um, well, not really. Fine, Scotland and Ireland won, and England and New Zealand. But effectively, the major games were won by Southern Hemisphere teams. Uh, for now, but I think this is going to make all the better for the next two, three weeks coming up to see how the teams develop and 
continue to grow? Do the Northern Ontario teams improve their style of handling it? Or can the Southern Ontario teams overcome and understand the style of the Northern Ontario teams? That's going to be the question over the next few weeks. So that's just great rugby to watch. So yeah, thanks guys for uh, joining me. I think the biggest thing here coming up to next week is just going to be seeing that. And I will bring out another video on uh, the team selections for the teams coming out later in this week, probably Thursday. So yeah, thank you very much guys. If you have any questions, any opinions of the games, any questions, anything that you feel, uh, maybe your opinion on the tries that I just questioned, the, 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 the quality of Northern versus Southern Hemisphere games, what is your opinion? Thanks guys, please leave us a, a, a comment down below. Please subscribe, please share, thank you.